levels are a little bit low. I've got like never-ending equipment problems here. Let me get that. Let me get that sorted out here. Give me just a second, guys, and I will get this uh, get these levels going here. There's uh, really a lot uh, going on in the background that goes into these weather casts. So um, sometimes I'm a little bit behind the curve here, but I think I got things going there. I just had to mess around in one of the window settings, but there we go. Uh, let's see here. Weather charts. Thank you for your patience, by the way. Um, I know we did not do a weather cast yesterday. Um, Windows updates uh, got me really behind, and I didn't get the computer back to about 8.30. But uh, we're just running a few minutes late, and here we go. We're looking at some thunderstorms along the dry line in north, north Texas, up in the Panhandle, into southwest Kansas. So there's about where the dry line position is. And we can bring up the dew point map there. And we see that maybe the dry line is a little bit co more complicated than it looks. We can definitely see a moisture gradient right here. And we're looking at the blue lines right back in here where we've got this moisture gradient. And it looks like that continues up in Kansas a little bit. But further out to the west, we see another moisture gradient. There's one right here. And that separates the 68 dew points, 66, from the 50s here in the Panhandle. So we know that these storms here are likely going to be high-based. Moisture axis that is uh, just east of I-35, it is just not in place yet. And I remember on the webcast on Saturday, we talked about maybe waiting till Tuesday for organized severe weather to get going and the bulk of the deeper moisture is way back here it's still down along the uh, gulf coast and probably we will get a low level jet set up tonight and that will help uh, strengthen that moisture field a little bit overnight here's the risk areas we've got a slight risk out for parts of the central plains up there and even into Iowa where we've had some severe weather so some of the moisture field does extend quite a bit further north up to the frontal boundary let me see if I can bring that up real quick so there we go we're looking at uh, Minnesota right there there's South Dakota Nebraska and Iowa and you can see the northern extent of the moisture field right there. And we've got 60s dew points. And I'm not really sure what shape the uh, corn irrigation is. That's a huge contributor to moisture in this area right here. Corn requires a lot of water. And I'm trying to remember. Let's see. I remember... The stalks get maybe about six or six feet high, maybe in late June. We're not quite there, but uh, I guess there probably is some irrigation going on, and that's contributing to all this. We see a temperature contrast right there, so that tells us maybe a warm front or maybe an outflow boundary from just north of Des Moines to north of Omaha right there. The actual front itself, it may be kind of like that. We're looking at the broad scale picture. The 70s and 80s here from the low 60s in this area. So anyway, we'll, we'll get, get that sorted out here very uh, shortly. Okay, let's take a look at the upper air charts. This is for this morning. We're looking at the 500 millibar chart. If I can get that center just right. There we go. So we got a trough off the west coast right there over California. So a little bit of a cold pool. San Joaquin Valley probably getting some showers this afternoon. And then the polar front jet extending from Arizona up to the Dakotas and then to the Great Lakes. Ridge over the Great Plains. So that's helping to keep things capped. We can kind of think of this whole area probably underneath a cap. 
and that's keeping skies kind of clear right now. And you can see the jet stream energy pretty far to the north. Now you notice one little feature in the field here. You see the height lines here. Okay, so obviously a ridge here, obviously a trough here, and another trough out here. But if you look at the uh, small scale features, you can see a little bit of flattening up in the Dakota. See, see right here, there's a little bit of a flat area, and that's probably a short wave moving through the flow right there. Okay, so if we have a trough right there, and maybe a ridge right there that might indicate a mesoscale frontal system, kind of like that. So that's something we're going to look for on the maps. And if that's not there, we would just go back to the original setup of Trough, California, Ridge, Wisconsin, and a frontal system in between. So in any case, definitely a front or multiple fronts in this area here. Looks like a little bit of a blocking pattern up north. Look at that high, cut off high up there into the Northwest Territories. So we've got kind of an omega block. See that forms kind of like the letter omega. So kind of a complex pattern going on right now. 700 millibar chart looking like that. And uh, mostly what I look at at this time on the Great Plains is temperatures. Let me zoom that in just a little bit. And you can see values of about 12. That's going to be pretty strongly capped. So those storms probably percolated for a while until they finally broke that cap there. And basically anything above 10, that's getting into definite cap territory there. And you see the colder temperatures out here. This is relatively uncapped air. 850 millibar chart looking like this. Doesn't go as far south as I hope to. I'm not using the SPC operator chart today. We're just going to use this. But we do see the southerly flow coming up from the Gulf. We've got 35 knots there at Amarillo. And tonight we should see a repeat of that with possibly even stronger winds. We see 17 degrees right there in Minneapolis, so probably a warm front looking like that. And if we look at the isotherm field, see the dotted lines right there? That kind of suggests a cold front extending back to the Four Corners area like that. Okay, so everything is looking fairly consistent right now. So let's go to the satellite picture and see what we have going on here. Let me change some of the default values here, and we will get this going. And let's do an animation here. This is interesting. They've got GO-16 going here. So it looks like we finally have a source of GO-16. This is the Marshall Space Flight Center. This is the URL here, weather.msfc.nasa.gov. So this is definitely a new change here. You can see they're bringing up the next generation satellite. And let's check it out. Wow, look at the resolution of that infrared. That's pretty cool there. And you can see that infrared, we've got five minute intervals here. So this is excellent. So we got a little MCS over northeastern Iowa, a little complex south of North Platte, Nebraska, and then these higher base storms over southwestern Kansas. And you can see a little bit of the dry line right through here. See that right there? I think we're seeing a little bit of haze maybe reflecting some slightly cooler temperatures toward the satellite. Let's take a look at the uh, visible imagery. That should be very interesting. Man, it's great to see all this GO-16 data coming online. Uh, let's see here, 1300. 
go 900 for that, do an animation, and yeah, let's put that on the Great Plains. Okay, so we got five minute uh, interval imagery there and uh, see some nice overshooting tops there south of North Platte. And looks like here, see the storm right here? Notice anything unusual about that? Looks like that is a right mover. Okay. So anyway, let me uh, bring up one more satellite image and uh, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Nothing going on in Texas, really. We do have some cirrus down there and I was showing that on the opening sequence. Some of that cirrus going overhead and that's probably associated with a subtropical jet. And you guys can take a look at this uh, Minnesota imagery. Wow, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> See gravity waves coming out from those overshooting tops right there. That's just spectacular. Let me take a look at the chat here and uh, see what we got going on. 22 viewers. Awesome. I was really worried there that the uh, delays and problems would probably scare some of you guys out. Okay, we got Andrew here checking in and uh, Southern Rebel. Probably not too far from here. Kevin McKinney, fun with tech, staging in Canyon, Texas. I guess uh, you're on the road chasing there. All set for tomorrow? Give me a target. Yeah, we'll check that out. Um, got Ron Chalfant here in uh, Ahmed in Saudi Arabia. Ryan Toomey's and Ryan Ter Terrell. Megan John up there in Minnesota. Good thunderstorms today, but nothing severe. Alexi Pink and uh, Brian Harp. Ron Chalfant caught an older digital atmosphere help show I did last year. Yeah, I need to do another one of those, definitely. Ancient astronaut, 85 degrees there at Canyon Lake, Texas. Eddie W. And uh, Burl H. Taste of summer in eastern Louisiana with temperatures up to 90 degrees. Brett Dean is here. Finally made a show. Two inches of rain Saturday. 68 expecting 90s this week. Uh, Mick is here from Australia. Ryan is saying Western Oklahoma, East Texas Panhandle will fire for Tuesday afternoon. And let's see here, just kind of skimming through chat. Carl Berghoff had some great structure this morning on the elevated storms. Hail covered the ground a few two inches deep. And Megan John expecting more storms there, four plus inches. Ryan, good amount of HP supercells raining down. Really good tonight. Brett Dean asks, what's mesoscale convection? Well, most of this uh, deep thunderstorm convection is uh, mesoscale. We're talking about scales in the lower hundreds of miles, like maybe from 60 up to 600 miles. Anything uh, greater than that is what we call synoptic scale. That's up in the like 600 to 6,000 range, 600 to 6,000 mile range. And we would be talking about, uh, let's see, for deep convection, probably large MCSs. But your average MCS, even that, is going to be a mesoscale system. And I'll just throw this in also. When we talk about models, mesoscale refers largely to where systems are out of hydrostatic balance, which means a lot of the forces that act on air parcels, those can be seriously out of balance there, and the models have to be able to f account for that. Okay, let me see here. Let me give you guys something else to look at while I go through the rest of the chat. I guess I'll bring up a sounding here for MLO and you guys can 
check that out. Okay. Carl Burkhoff says the storm this morning was an elevated wannabe supercell inflow band wrapping all the way around. Weak convergence tried to develop rotation three times. Couldn't quite pull it off. Ryan says go 16 imagery. Imagery looks sharp. Joshua Gilbert, thunderstorms in the forecast tonight for central Wisconsin. Ron says report of a funnel cloud in Southern California in the LA area. So that would be with that cold core. All right, so let's check out the Amarillo sounding and we can see some of that capping right here. And 700 millibar chart that kind of showed a little bit of that. So you see that 12 degrees Celsius temperature there that we saw in the 700 millibar chart. So definitely cap there and to get convection we probably needed parcels maybe like that right there with some cap removal. I, I just don't think that sounding alone would produce thunderstorms. Looks like some good cape there. Okay, so definitely some instability there, and we can see the steep lapse rates. And that's something I talked about in that dynamics video that I put up last night, so you might want to check that out. The slope of the sounding, way over to the left. So that's indicating a very positive lapse rate, very steep lapse rate, and the potential for strong instability. And we see a little bit of a weak lapse rate way up here at 500 millibars, a little bit of warm air. And that's something that uh, we refer to as a cape robber. I don't know if you've ever heard of that cape robber. That was a huge problem way back in 1998. We had a, a ton of those, and I can't remember what exactly caused that as far as the circulation, but warm air up there. It's like when you try to build in some cape. This part poking over to the right that removes some of that cape. So you imagine this top part shifting over to the right and that's going to remove the cape in that column. So on a severe weather day that will cut your instability down a bit. Okay, let's see here. What can we check out? Uh, let's look at the dynamics and let me grab some of my water here. Okay, dynamics for this evening. You can see in Minnesota, dynamics are not very strong at all. In fact, we've got a bit of ridging up there. So we don't need a big short wave to get things going. The short wave will help remove some of the capping. And that's probably what happened here in Texas. Maybe a bit of these short waves, maybe perhaps this one that may have moved overhead earlier in the day and maybe cooled the mid levels a bit. And then further out in California, you can see the cutoff low right there. So that's what's producing some of the funnel cloud reports there. Let's take a look at a sounding out there. I guess I'll have to take uh, Las Vegas. Okay, bringing up the Las Vegas sounding. And we're getting a weird error message. There we go. So Las Vegas, we can see kind of a continually unstable lapse rate. A distinct lack of moisture in the low levels. But we can generate showers from the mid-levels like that. Not much cape, really, for that. But anyway, let's see if we can grab another sounding. Let's try Orange County, California. We see a little bit of what looks looks like a bit of a loaded gun sounding here, a little bit of low-level moisture, but not much 
cool air aloft, we really need that upper part to lean over to the left a bit. Let's see here. Let me try the Edwards sounding. That's old data. Man, the soundings are just not configured very well for California, so I can't really look at the uh, core of that uh, upper level low. So I don't know. We're going to have to probably just skip that, but we can check some of the radar data. Let's do that real quick and go out to California. I'll bring up uh, GR level 2. And then I'm going to use the SPC experimental website to kind of figure out what I want to look at. So let me go out there. And it looks like uh, whatever happened may have shut down today. Not seeing much going on right now. So let me take a look at the uh, satellite real quick. Okay, so we do have a bit of convection out there in California and definitely some in the uh, mountains of Nevada right there. Let me uh, move over a little bit. So yeah, here we've got a lot of uh, convection going on. Uh, let's see here, Tonopah is going to be about right there. And uh, that lake bed right there, that's uh, Groom Lake, that's Area 51. So it looks like the convection is a little bit north of there in the central Nevada area. Okay, so let's uh, just move things along and uh, do the thermal analysis. 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness. We'll bring that up and uh, look at where the fronts are. And there we go. This is the thickness and isobars. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like our warm front is actually in Iowa and Nebraska, like that. And then our cold front region is going to be in the Four Corners area, just like that. And then what we have in California is cold core convection. So you can say that that's way back behind the front. So this front is going to be emerging out into the Great Plains in the next day or so. The movement on that front is mostly to the northeast right now. But that will be making it out onto the Great Plains. And then the dry line, it's going to be roughly like that right there. Okay, let's uh, start bringing up the uh, forecast, I guess. We'll move on to the GFS. And I think since we're looking at some convection for tomorrow, maybe we should look at the NAM. That's a good mesoscale model. It's got a lot of skill for forecasting on the Great Plains, uh, thunderstorms, mesoscale processes like the dry line. Oops, let me back that up a little bit. Let's grab the 3 kilometer NAM. So one thing that this will help us figure out is if uh, convection is going to be breaking out. We often use models beyond 6 to 12 hours to figure out if we're going to have convection because the skill of the model that far out is going to be better than what you will get with manual analysis. From 0 through 6 hours out, you'll probably do a better job than the models. So. We're going to use this to kind of figure out where the convection will be tomorrow. Okay, so starting out at the be beginning of the model. Yep, there's some of the convection in the northern Texas Panhandle. And uh, this is a little bit further west than where the convection actually is. So there's a little bit of error on this model. Okay, so we'll run this forward. 
We see the convection moves northeast overnight through Kansas and Nebraska. Overnight convection along the warm front in Iowa and Nebraska right there. So at this time, we've got the southerly gradient in place over Texas and Oklahoma, and we'll probably have a low-level jet established. And then for tomorrow afternoon, looks like we do get some initiation along the Cap Rock, maybe around Wellington and uh, Shamrock, Texas. Dry line is very likely to be in this area right there tomorrow. And then we look at the uh, thickness the red lines here. This is telling us that the cold front is probably going to fall in that trough right there. So it's st starting to come into the western counties of Texas right there. And then the remainder of the map is going to look something like that right there. Okay, then for 0Z, zero zero, moving up from 4 to 7 p.m., we have convection breaking out near Vernon. The storm here near Wellington and Shamrock moves out towards Elk City. And then we see more convection out in central Oklahoma or central Kansas near Pratt and Dodge City. So those are probably going to be the targets right in that area. So if you get a room at uh, Woodward, Oklahoma, Elk City, you probably can't go wrong for tomorrow. Okay, then after that, we can see that the main cold front starts coming out into Texas. See that right there? The thickness lines, there's that gradient right there. So this is definitely the cold front coming out. And that's going to act like a big wedge. And we end up with the MCS developing in the Dallas-Fort Worth area overnight tomorrow night. But then that kind of subsides because we're getting up to 12Z. This is cooling. The uh, cap starts becoming a big factor and that tends to shut down a lot of the convection and a lot of what we have is going to be elevated. So not very much going on, definitely no surface-based convection, and we see the cold front just kind of emerge like that right there. Okay. And then for Wednesday evening, looks like that front kind of breaks up across Texas, front frontalysis, and this is probably what's left of the uh, frontal system right there. So according to the models, it looks like we're going to stay kind of capped there on Wednesday. Okay, so let's go to the GFS and uh, see what that shows. This is a uh, global model. Okay, so overnight and then tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening when we do the webcast, here comes the front coming out into Texas. The model tends to agree on convection in the Caprock area from Childress up to Dodge City. So again, this is confirming like a hotel room near Woodward or Elk City or maybe up towards uh, Pratt would be perfect. Then we see things line out as the cold front emerges overnight. The model does not bring that cold front and uh, MCS as far east. Barely makes it to Dallas by Wednesday morning. And then we see the frontalysis again right in this area. And the model goes for a little bit of initiation right there in the Ozarks. But uh, I guess the cap is going to keep things pretty much shut down on Wednesday. And let's check out Thursday here. We see the cold front coming together, the polar front coming together here, and the dry line looks like that does blow up along the cap rock, maybe just east of there. So probably another chase day here. And then coming up for Friday, looks like another chase day. 
It's like a strong cold front from Oklahoma City down to Abilene. So probably good chase conditions up in the Kansas City area here near that uh, polar, polar front low. See how that's fed by the subtly gradient like that. And then possibly a few other targets down the line. And for Saturday, that front moves very slowly out into Texas. High pressure driving that south. A little bit of an MCS all the way down to East Texas and Austin and San Antonio. And I'm not too sure about chase targets for something like this because you can see that the gradient supporting the moisture inflow is kind of pointed like that. So frankly, I think based on this, I think probably some of the better targets are going to be down in the Austin in San Antonio area for Saturday. And for Sunday, high pressure in the central U.S. right there. Looks like maybe a cold front kind of like that. You can see the moisture feed mostly coming up from the central gulf up to the frontal boundary here off the Texas coast. Doesn't look like any good targets. Looks like Monday should be shut down too. Well, actually, maybe some convection on the high plains right here of Colorado. And then for Tuesday next week, uh, another front comes together. So probably some chase targets from the Red River up to southeast of Colorado there. Okay, so there goes the next uh, system. This is on the 24th, 25th. And then for the 25th, looking like that, maybe some thunderstorm action up there in Pennsylvania. High pressure driving cold air out into the Gulf. So we should be shut down on the 27th. And this is getting pretty far out there. So anyway, that's probably about all I have there for the GFS. Quick look at chat. Let me just see what else, what else is going on here. Gotta love Windows updates, yeah. I started the uh, Windows update last night about 7 p.m. And I was thinking, yeah, I'll be able to get this done before we go on. And that did not happen thing was still grinding away. I just heard the disk drive, drive grinding and grinding by 745. Tried restarting. It continued grinding and we were pretty much pretty much gone there by 8. So anyway, I'll make sure not to do that again next time. Uh, Hiker A AZ, hello from Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, uh, welcome. Good to see you joining us. Ryan says, enhanced risk posted for tomorrow. Let's take a look at that real quick. So we'll bring up the day two convective outlook. So remember, uh, we were looking at anywhere from Pratt down the dry line towards Childress and probably some additional targets up to the north. So uh, Maybe some targets up there that I didn't consider. but So anyway, yeah, like I said, Woodward, Mangum, Pratt, uh, those are definitely some good starting targets for tomorrow. Okay. And that's probably about all I got for tonight. Anyway, I appreciate you all joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.